Oh, you the voice? Nah, not me. So if you're not the voice, who is? The people, man. The people's the voice. So what does that make you? That makes me the middleman. I'm the middleman. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Middleman Podcast. I am the man in the middle, Kevin Martinez, and today I am joined by a real sound guy, Broy Beats. What's up? How we doing, bro? I'm doing I like pretty that good. sweatshirt. Thank you. I uh, just got a shipment of them very recently. It's the first merchandise I've ever had with my name on it, so I'm pretty pumped. I did a rebrand. Uh, I had an older logo that was kind of like clunky and weird, so I was like, I'll make a new logo. And then once I saw the logo, I was like, all right, I think it's time for some merch. <laughs> so. No, nah, it's simple. It's clean. Yeah. Um, I respect it. Thank and you. Uh, let me know. I see you got some shipments. So let me know. We'll, we'll talk about getting me a sweatshirt. Yes, sir. Definitely getting me a sweatshirt. Um, but yeah, man, welcome to the Middleman Podcast. You're a real sound guy, as I said. Um, that's actually how I was introduced to you as. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yo, this guy is a real sound guy. Um, little backstory about Broy and I. We met at a Sanctuary Studio or what was Sanctuary Studio. Um, right outside, you know, right outside uh, in the daytime. And you had mentioned to me uh, uh, something about like royalty free videos. You know, you just mentioned to me like who you are, you know, why I was like, why did they call you a real sound guy? You were like, yo, bro, I've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> um, and, you know, checked out your account, everything like that. I'm like, nah, this checks out. Like, this guy really is uh, a real sound guy. And then later that day, I think it was the same day, it's nighttime now, correct? Yeah. It's nighttime now. And I come back with some brewskis. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Come back with some brewskis with the almighty Nezo. Okay, Nezo was with me that night as well. And, um, you know, the owner, owner of Sanctuary invited us downstairs. Um, it was you, me, a couple other um, artists in there. Mm -hmm. And, dude, what a night that was, man. That was one hell of a night. Dude, I think the first time we shotgun beers in the parking lot of the Sanctuary Studio, I think that was, like, the introduction. Because you, I think you guys were fishing or something, right? Did you go fishing or... I think I just went to go pick them up. Yeah, and you yeah. came back, and you had a case of beers, and you were like, what's up, guys? You want a beer? And you were like... I was like, yeah, someone was like, we should shotgun them. And we were like, okay. And then there was like four or five of us just shotgun the beers real fast. And I was like, oh, all right, I fuck with these guys. A hundred percent. Now that you mention it, I think I was fishing or I was out swimming somewhere. I think I was, it might've been swimming, but nonetheless, um, you know, it's funny because I've heard that there was like a phase where I just met people outside of yeah. sanctuary and people come all the time, had a beer and like, they'd be like, oh, I shotgun with you. And I'm like, wait, what? And we shotgun together. Mm. So it was it was like a, a way of meeting people. It was hilarious. It was a lot of fun. And then, yeah, we went downstairs with a few artists, bro, and we chopped it up, yeah. man. Like, you just had to be there. Okay? Yeah, you it's really hard to explain the things that happened down there, but there was some real heat being put out mm -hmm. by some real talented individuals. <laughs> 110%. You know, what I admire the most, where you were just free creating beats right then and there. Yeah. You know, and... Me being who I am, you know, I jumped in a freestyle. Nezo over there harmonizing, doing this thing. It was fantastic. But it was so cool to just watch you uh, annihilate that that keyboard and, and just create beats up on the spot, man. Thanks. Yeah, it's that fun. Great time, man. Great time. But yeah. yeah, like he said, you had to be there. Yeah. Honestly, God, if you haven't had an opportunity to be in a studio, um, try and get in a studio. If you have friends who are musicians or, you know, recording artists try to get in there with them to just catch the vibe because honestly a lot of the stuff that comes out in those sessions even if you're not a musical person like a lot of introspective things and like just i don't know like you can pick up a lot of life tips or advice and things that just translate in like weird ways um you never know what you might get out of it yeah a hundred percent man because uh you know you mentioned even if you're not an artist which i am not an artist you know you don't have to be in there doing your thing and freestyling with the crew man just go over there maybe say an ad lib yeah you know say Scan an ad -lib, yeah and 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 just like just be be the guy who's recording who's recording no one's recording you know shit like that like mm -hmm. it, it was i have some footage of it you know but that's just for the people who were there you just it was such a great time yeah um but you know, from that first impression of you, you know, that's what I'm big on, big on first impressions. And I mentioned earlier that you had mentioned to me royalty free videos. You know, you were trying to show me something. You were teaching me something, you know, and uh, I've noticed that as of recent, your social media has been switching more into a teaching. Yeah. You know, you're teaching a lot of producers. You're teaching a lot of musically inclined people um, how to use different programs, you know, uh, right. uh, important tips and tricks and stuff like that. So I thought that that was pretty, pretty cool. Thanks. Um and, and you're doing that now. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I guess like it, the script kind of flipped for me, right? So 
I do make music. I am a producer. Um, but the more that I get involved in like the music industry, mm. the more I'm seeing things that I don't want for myself. Like I don't want to be a performer by any means, you know, like I like producing, I like making music in my studio or whatever. Um, but a lot of like the music now is pretty much like geared towards performance stuff. So how do you, as a musician, do you navigate not being a performer, but also wanting to like be a career musician? Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, um, well, what can I do? I could live stream. I could sell beats. Um, I could do audio engineering, like mixing and mastering, uh, stuff like that. And then the more that I started doing that stuff, the more I was like, man, sometimes like I make these mistakes or like I find myself struggling with certain concepts in my own work. And I was like, if I'm struggling with this after doing, I've been doing this for over 10 years. So mm -hmm. if I'm struggling doing this over 10 years, imagine the people who are just starting or, you know, the people who have been doing it a little less uh, struggling with the same thing. So I was like, I definitely have some type of insight into the process, but the process is always subjective, right? So like mm -hmm. there's no one size fits all for all like arts and music and stuff like that. So uh, I basically just wanted to share what I have picked up along my journey in the hopes that someone else also will benefit from it. Because I know, like, when I was first starting, I would have loved to have content like this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I'm geared towards now. Like, I, I want to help people uh, push themselves and, and really help find their sound. Um, but that's where, like, the teaching uh, and the shorts have been coming from. And I didn't expect it to be received the way it's been received. That was my next question. Yeah. How receptive how is it, has it been? People have reached out and tell them and like they tell me how much it helps and mm. that is enough for me to like keep doing it, right? So a lot of times we put out content and people focus a lot on the numbers, right? They want to get viral videos and stuff like that. Like obviously my content isn't viral. Like there's nothing about anything that I do that should go viral, right? If it does, it's a freak accident. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like I'm not focusing on the numbers. I'm just focusing on the subject matter for the most part, you know? Like yeah. when I put out videos... They're informative. You know, I'm hoping that people can save them, come back uh, when they're struggling with this particular thing. And then they'll be like, oh, I remember this guy. He really helped me out. And then you form that connection with them through that short. Um, and then obviously if they like have any questions or they get confused or whatever, like they can reach out to you like personally mm -hmm. and ask for clarification or be like, you know, whatever, what, what have you. Um, so that has been interesting. I didn't expect that type of reception, but it's been real yeah. <laughs> yeah man you're putting out videos all the time you know you pin them to your to your page you know just to help uh producers understand certain things like about um eqs you know just plugins you know yeah. plugins as well um you know i see that in your in your bio um you had music producer audio engineer <laughs> and plug influencer yeah <laughs> you know the plug influencer you know what's is that about like plugging in for so plugins are like the eqs uh -huh. and like any any type of software that you would use inside your workstation, right? So okay. if you pull up an EQ, that would be a plugin. Or like the company that makes the EQ, like they make the plugins, so to speak. So the plug influencer thing is kind of me trying to reach the companies who make the plugins uh -huh. and be like, hey, I'm this dude who will advertise your plugins because I use them. You know what I mean? Like I can push these in front of the right people for you so I'm trying to build my audience of the right people so that way I can reach out to these companies and be like, hey, here is my audience. These are the hard facts and the statistics. Like, if you would like to work with me, I'm happy to work with you. So I can get some, like, awesome plugins and, like, some stuff that they're working on in beta. Yeah. <laughs> like, try out a bunch of this stuff. Um, because you never know what, like, they might come out with something that's, like, super efficient uh, for anyone. Super easy to use. I know there's a lot of plugins that's literally just one knob. Okay. You turn the knob and like it does what it's supposed to do and that's it. Like stuff like that can make a music producer or an audio engineer's job super efficient, way quicker. Um, so just having that type of uh, access, I feel like would be beneficial to someone like me in the beginning when I didn't know like what was going on. Yeah, it's like uh, they'll give you the, you'll like test run things for them as yeah. well. You know, give them the feedback. Um, I think I remember you mentioning at a, at a point that you had a, uh, some type of deal, not not so much deal, but like a company was sending you out one of those uh, mixing boards that you were using, you know, when you 
I don't, I don't, I don't know what you call it when you're breaking down with the beats. Yeah. You know, the what, sampler that I had. That, you talking okay, about the sampler. Yeah. My friends had been sent samplers from the company. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. I wish it were me. No, but I'm sure. not. I'm not that dude. <laughs> you're gonna get there. You know, to plug in influencer for sure because now you also have, uh, you know, 60 minutes of one on one. You know, I just yeah. saw that uh, someone. Um, by the name of Rosie Bones. Rosie Bones. Yeah, we just had that call the other night. Okay, yeah. How was that? Um, and that was the first time you did that. And how often? It, explain to the people what what the sixty minutes could entail. Is she a producer? So well? Rosie Bones. Yeah, he's my friend Armin. He's a producer. Um, he's an artist. He actually has a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, I'll leave that aside because yeah. it, it's really in depth. Um, but I'm doing uh sixty minute one to ones where basically you could book your sixty minutes. And the 60 minutes is yours. So if you're a music producer and you want feedback for the 60 minutes on stuff you're working for, we can sit and I'll give you all the feedback that you need. Um, if you're struggling on a particular track um, that you need help mixing, I can answer any mixing questions that you have. So, um, if you want to talk about the business or like branding, obviously I'm not the most um, successful person with branding, but I am building consistently. So I feel like I have value in that area as well. So the 60 minutes is theirs for whatever they want to do with mm -hmm. it. Um, I don't think that I'm going to do mixing for people on the 60 minutes. I like to work alone. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's weird. I mean, like, if I was in the studio, it would be different because people would be, like, there and you get, like, I don't know. It's a little bit different. But I don't like the virtual aspect of mixing someone else's music um, with them, like, on a screen. Like, yeah. I would actually rather them be in the room because you can feel their energy when they're in the room as opposed to like just being on the screen like it's just weird for me um but i might end up changing that but that's what the 60 minutes entails so if you are interested in that hit me up we can talk um but yeah the rosie bones one went really well uh he shared some tracks with me that he was working on um he asked for feedback i gave him some feedback uh and that was it we sh we were shooting the ship for a little bit and then before he knew it, it was like an hour and a half i i gave him a little bit extra because we were vibing but and that's cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> but stuff like that like that's what makes stuff like this exciting for me which is like having that engagement with people and you really get to like learn who they are through that conversation mm. like i i haven't had an actual conversation with armin um like through voice until that call but after that like and we've worked together we've made music together so having that actual call was like really insightful and like you actually get to meet the people that you're working with <laughs> yeah no that's dope yeah. um are they local to the area or are they like he's from, from oklahoma city okay you see the, yeah the music world it's so cool yeah. you know it's so cool because uh the way you guys everyone is just connecting um from different locations all across the world you yeah. know like uh more often than not, my my buddies keep telling me about their brothers in in Germany. Yeah, you know, like you, do you have brothers in Germany? As Germany, well? England, Spain, uh, the Netherlands, France. Like I got them all over. Wow, man, you're yeah. probably learning like twelve different languages at the they same time. They all speak time. English. I mean, still though, yeah. still though, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. That's yeah, pretty tough. but that's the that's really neat too because you get to see. I'm like I'm talking to a lot of these people every day, right? Mm -hmm. And you get to see into their heads of what it's like in their culture and in their countries and stuff like you don't get that anywhere else. Right. And so that has been helping me too, just like grow as a person. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we're all different ages too. Like I, there's guys in their forties, there's kids who are younger than me. Like it's just a, a wide perspective of everyone with the similar interest of music. And that's like, it's such an interesting thing to me. <laughs> honestly. So would you say collabing is like not essential, but you know, it's, it's something that people should seek. Yeah, for sure. In the music world. Yeah. What's the saying? If you want to go far, go, or if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go in groups or something like that. I absolutely butchered huh. that, that quote, but okay. yeah, collaboration is key. There's, there's not a lot of things that you'll do in life by yourself. Like everything that you're going to do is involved with someone somehow. So get used to collaborating. It's good, especially in music. Like if you're stuck on an idea, send it to someone else and get help like, there's nothing wrong with asking for help you know well let's uh let's segue into warning then because i know you and i we spoke about warning on the phone briefly uh warning is one of your newest tracks yeah um which we'll, we'll definitely talk about your disco graph as well because it's like you know lo-fi to where yeah. we're at with edm now <laughs> um there's a lot to cover you there's know, a lot and, and bro he's a lot going thing. on yeah yeah <laughs> um but you know that song in particular warning um you did a collaboration with crystal grid yeah um and you know that 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 track is such a different sound. If you haven't heard the track, it's on all streaming platforms. Check it out. 
Check it out. Um, <laughs> how would you describe that song? How would uh, you describe that song? The, I would describe it how you described it. He wants to run through a wall when he listens to it. So it's run through wall kind of music. Um, whatever that sparks in your brain is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Those are great guys, uh, Cody and Jared. Where where are they uh, located? Because I saw the, the video you guys did. One homie's on the beach. Yeah. He's like, yo, check this out. <laughs> yeah. So um, Jared is from Ohio. He's from Ohio, mm-hmm. but I think... He also stays in Colorado. Cool. cool. Uh, so does Cody. Cody's from Colorado. Fire. Yeah. So they're a dubstep duo. And I met Cody. He does a, a podcast. It's called the Chilled Samples Podcast. Um, Because oh. he found my lo-fi beats. And the first time we did his podcast was the first time I released an electronic song. And he was like, I knew you as the lo-fi beats producer. And now you're here putting out electronic music. Yeah. <laughs> I was like... Yeah. <laughs> so kind of the similar thing. He's like, what's going on? I was like, I have no idea. I'm just like, do I'm just doing it, you know, like two different speeds. Yeah. But I feel like as an artist, that's a good thing. Uh-huh. Like I'm, I know there's some people in the music industry who are confused by it. Like, okay, you're putting out lo-fi beats. Okay. You're putting out like high energy dubstep tracks. Like it's confusing obviously. Right. Um, But that's like, as an artist, I want to show my depth of creativity and like the progression mainly, right? So if you listen back to like the very first track that I put out and then listen to Warning, it's like night and day, even from a production standpoint, like it sounds way different. Um, and, and that's mainly it, like building a discography is what I'm trying to do. So when it's all said and done, people can look at my discography and be like, oh, this dude was really out here like putting in work you know yeah, like 100%. yeah so that's what i'm that's what i'm i got going on now but warning was definitely out of a little out of pocket so you were telling me that um you were like stuck at a point with warning like you just couldn't figure out some like something within the song yeah uh what was that and then you know you went ahead and reached out to so crystal grit is made up of cody and jared uh, and jared okay yeah. so it's two people that's pretty dope respect um so okay so you know you reached out to them and uh was this your first collab with them um ye- yes yeah okay. yeah what had happened was um on cody's podcast because he's also a lo-fi producer he is also a dubstep producer he does both but his artists are separated um like his name his alias is that what you mean? yeah he has a couple okay. aliases gotcha so we would we were talking on his podcast once he started hearing my electronic music he was like let's get involved in some electronic music I was like, okay. So I sent them some ideas that I hadn't finished, but were in a good spot. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, we'll take this, 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 and this, and let's get to work. I was like, okay. Um, The track that I had sent them was intro to the first drop of the song. Okay. And then they took that and flipped the whole thing on its head and became the whole track. (laughs) I was like, okay. They sent me back a project with like 100 plus tracks in the project. And I was like, okay, this is a little bit overwhelming for me right now. I've never, I'd never seen anything that large in, in projects prior to that. Um, but they just like, I don't know, the way that they did it uh, was interesting. And to see it, like to see the project and how they organized the project down to like the sound selection and all like the processing stuff. It was just interesting to have that like peek into their head mm. to see what's going on. Because a lot of my tracks aren't that extensive or like in depth <laughs> but theirs was like insane yeah i could only imagine what the screen 100 had. of those yeah yeah <laughs> yeah some really crazy like, organization and like whew. yeah it was it was insane you know it makes me think about coding like yeah. it's very similar to coding yeah when you're doing something like that because it's just a collection of sounds yeah it's putting things into buckets and stuff like that uh-huh. yeah that's exactly what it was like and i looked at it and i gave it a glance and i was like dude i honestly don't really know what's going on here but yeah. it sounds good like <laughs> hours and hours and hours you would say correct yeah to do that jeez man and you know you're, you're worried you know you're talking about how they think you know and i'm i'm trying to figure out how you think like yeah. why your head even goes to that space because like think about it it's like you said and like how i said it's it's run through wall type music michael Run through wall type music, bro. Yeah. What do like you think? This wall what do you think, music. Like, what do you think you were? What were you thinking about? Like, what does a person who <laughs> who creates EDM like that have to be thinking at the moment? That's what. That's what I want to know. 
That's what I want to know. Well, what I'm thinking it's like high BPMs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just crazy. Like. So I'm guessing you have not heard the track. No. Okay. Okay. So I, I may have played it for you. You just. I probably won't remember. Yeah. Didn't remember, but I'm thinking like fast, like fast BPMs. Yeah. And just to run like, to. Yeah, to run to, and maybe gym music. You know what I mean? Like some crazy stuff like that. That's really what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Or you know, you could run through a wall, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something about. And it's not even like dance music, really. Like, would you dance to it? Uh, nah, I don't think I dance to it. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I no, would just, I I'm would just like get curious, a sick like pump the it. depth of the like activity that it could be done to Warning. it. Warning, dude! It's like <laughs> holy shit. Bro. Like I could see it in like um, a build up to like a Call of Duty trailer. Yeah, like I could see like right before they drop the nuke. Yeah, like that's the vibe. Like warning, like shit's about, and then it's like five, four, and then it's like then you go nuts. You yeah, know, you just go berserk. And I say it over and over and over again, bro. At the gym, I'm not, <laughs> I'm that guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's such a big antidepressant, bro. It's crazy. I'm so happy to hear that. Honestly, yeah, I feel good right now. Man. Yeah. yeah. I had um this one woman over at uh, the city market this morning. You know, she, I was over there. I bought the Arizonas. You know, for tea time. Not brought to you by, but inspired by Arizona iced tea. Um, so I brought it over. I went. I went over there, and this one woman goes, "You look good. I like your style." <laughs> and I was like. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I just kept it pushing, you know, yeah. so I was like, I didn't know I needed that, but we had it, you know, and that, that don't you there. love that, dude? Just like nice people being nice people. It's, like, it's, it's don't want beautiful. anything in return. Just like, hey, you look good today. Exactly. Thanks. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm, I'm going to stick my chest out a little bit now. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, like after that, I was like, I want to go do something out of the ordinary today. And I don't know what that is. But at the same time, I do have a very busy schedule today. But I'm like, I want to get a tattoo. Nice. <laughs> I just yeah. Like, but the, the convention's coming next weekend. Yeah. Like, you big convention guy? Um, you know, as of recent, I've just gone to a few conventions. I went to the Reptile Expo over here. Um, nice. William Snakespear. Yeah, you know he he was there. That was uh, you holding a tarantula gave me bad vibes. <laughs> <laughs> if someone put a tarantula within fifteen feet of me, that's too close. Bro, I was uh, I was terrified, you know. But honestly. It really wasn't much holding it right there. Like yeah. post production, like really thinking about <laughs> it. Like I was like it really wasn't much. Like and I didn't really feel any like how hairy it was, none of that. You know, I didn't want to pet it. Yeah. I don't know if you could pet triangulas. You yeah. know, I don't think I can I give him a little yeah, on the back. Little, hey buddy. That's scary. <laughs> you know, yeah, I wouldn't do that. So um but yeah, we did that and then the Scran Tattoo Convention's coming up. So I've gone to that before. I would love to go again and yeah. just have at it, you know, maybe make I would wait for the it. convention. Because you don't you don't know the artists that are gonna be there, right? No. Right. No, I don't. You'll probably find some really awesome stuff at the conventions. Because people come from tab. all over for that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, 100 percent. 100 percent. Yeah. A little segue there. A little segue there. I'm yeah. If you're looking for the for some tattoos, the screen, uh tattoo convention is next weekend. Yeah. yeah? Every yeah. every week. Uh, excuse me. Every year when they do it, it's a fantastic time. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So um yeah so let's talk about so we we were here with the EDM right your headspace where were you <laughs> when you were just <laughs> thinking about warning um you know and and. Because it's such a different gear. It's literally a 180 spin to what you normally produce. What do you, hold on, before we get into that, what do you normally produce so people understand, like, why you chose lo-fi? Is that one of your favorite genres of music? Uh, no. No, okay. No. So, the way that I describe my music, um, it's very emotionally driven. Mm. So, the things that you hear are a representation of the things that I feel. So, with the lo-fi music... I was chasing a feeling with the sound that can only be achieved through that particular style or genre, right? Yeah. Uh, and then as I continue to grow and feel more things, I'm trying to translate that into music that has given me a similar feeling. So when you hear lo-fi songs of mine, uh, they are invoked emotions from other lo-fi songs that I had, right? So I'm not trying to copy a sound. I'm trying to recreate the feeling I had when I heard a particular song. Mm, okay. um, and that's the thing that is hard to drive across to people who like just listen to music at face value because they'll see the lo-fi beats, they'll see electronic music, and then they'll see dubstep. It's like, obviously, it's confusing, but it's all a representation of me as a person. 
I see what you're saying. So you're saying that some people don't really like that because it's like you're stepping out of your self made identity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like people definitely. know you for this. Uh huh. They want that. But yeah. me, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> that's like that's not the lane that I'm taking, you know? Yeah. Um so like the whole real sound guy thing is that's like an overarching thing. Like it's all sound, you know. Um I, I just wanna make good music. Like Broy beats is good music. And if you listen to it, the music's good. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not like trying to be like conceited or anything, but I put a lot of work into the music that I make so that it's good. Like it's palatable stuff. Um, I don't think I've put out a bad song. Obviously there's songs that people won't like just because everyone's taste is subjective. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't personally think there's like a track that I put out that was like, oh, this is absolute dog shit. Like <laughs> no one should ever listen to this song ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I like it, man. You've uh, you've been working at a very heavy pace. You know, you've been doing it for 10 years now? Yeah, I've been producing since I was like 15. Okay. I'm 27 now. Um, and I've been... You're only two years older than me? Yeah. Bro, I thought you were like... 30? Yeah. Older than 30? I get Sorry, that all the time. It's all, it's all good, man. <laughs> Sorry. It happens all the time. I do look old. But it's because people stress me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weathered out here. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I've been doing this for a while. I definitely put in my time, my 10,000 hours, like twice over. Um, Did so, you go to school for this? Or? No. 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 Everything about uh, music production that I know, music theory, playing music, all that stuff is self-taught. 13 is when you started this? Season? I started playing music when I was like 10, 11. Okay. And then I started like releasing music uh, 2017, I think it was. So not too long ago, I started releasing music, but I've been making music literally since like beginning of high school, through high school, through college. So and up to now. <laughs> and a lot of your music, it's, it's all sound, you know, it's all sound. Are there any tracks that you actually like uh, maybe wrote out and had someone get on, on the track and sing it out for you? Uh, I don't take you as a singer. I don't. Well, I could. <laughs> I I do. I do sing. Okay. Uh, I'm not a great writer by any uh, means. Okay. Okay. That's why I avoid putting vocals on any of my songs mm. but i did in college one time write a, a whole song front to back singing and i did rap on the second half if you could find it it's yours but i'm not going to tell you where it is i'm not going to tell you how to how to find it but it's out there fuck <laughs> okay okay um but yeah that that was an interesting phase for me as a human <laughs> <laughs> But I learned a lot during that, right? Yeah. Uh, I needed that experience. Um, but I feel like, like I said, a lot of my music is like emotionally driven stuff. So yeah. I I just like recreating the feeling how by any means. Um, I could sing. I'm not a great writer. I would rather collaborate with people who are great writers and great singers. Um, I don't know, to fill the gap in my weakness, you know? Like, I know my limitations, basically. Like... I would just rather have someone like fill in the gaps in my limitations. <laughs> um, so when you went to college, did you go to college for audio engineering? Or? Yeah, no, I was no? a human services major, so, social worker. It was like a psychology major with a sociology minor. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and here you are. Making music. Yeah, here yeah. you are making music. That's sick. But man. college was great, dude. Like I needed that also as a person because it taught me a lot about working with other people and like how to just like be a good person <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. college is college no matter where you go they're going to teach you a lot of the same stuff um but the the experiences and the people that you meet they, like that's so cliche but it's true like you're going to learn a lot about yourself and it's it's super important but had i had if i had the opportunity to go to school for audio yeah. i i a thousand percent would have mm -hmm. because of the people i would have met the connections i would have made uh would have made my journey a little bit easier uh, but again, it's not necessary. Like people like Russ, like Russ is all self-taught. He releases all of his music by himself. Like he's done it by himself. Mm -hmm. Like it's possible to do it. It's just a matter of how you intend to do it in your own way. Um, and just like being content with like the way that you're doing it. That's like the most important part. Like if you're not happy with what you're doing, do something else. <laughs> like don't try to force things if it's not making you happy. Like just go and find your happiness 
and yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna add on to that just uh, about being happy and shit like that. Uh, this week I've been thinking about. I was actually gonna save it for tea time. Let me just talk about it right now. This week I was just thinking about it. I'm like, yo, like I really do love this podcast. Like I'm fucking with what we're doing here, man. Like I was talking to you earlier about like um, the vision. Yeah. You know, um, we got some very exciting things coming up. Like it's like every week it's just uh, it's growing at a steady rate. You yeah. know, and I'm like, yo, this it's it's really tough and. Uh, I'm over here doing my job, which is HVAC, which sucks. You know, I've, I've openly, like, I'll just be there and I'm like, yeah, I fixed it, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I really don't care. You know, if my boss finds out, they during an interview, they were like, um, what, what makes you, like, real, feel real passionate about this? I was like, honestly, man, just, uh, you know, fixing it for the person, and that's pretty much it. You know, like, I was like, well, once you do it after a while, you know, you just get into routine of things and, you, you know, really, you lose the passion for it, right? Yeah. So, anyway, with that being said, um, I'm over here trying to shoot my shot being an MC at uh, a festival being held here in Scranton. Um, I know one of the people who put it together. Uh, so maybe, you know, I'm like, maybe they could put in a good word or whatever. But right. anyway, just like I'm trying to get in opportunities uh, to make this my full time type of gig here. Like right. even uh, I've, I've talked and said the idea, like maybe go to these guys and talk to them in a radio show. But then someone even mentioned like, but Kev, like if you do that. You won't be able to be you like all the time. You Why? know what I mean? Just because I feel like there's limitations when you step into a business boundary and incorporation. Right. You're you them. Know? You're I'm, a representation of them, not they, you. Exactly. Yeah. So now there's a difference. So like if I went to them and said, listen, like this is my show. This is what I do. Here's my work. I just need a a, a, a set time and a network. Right. You know, like that's it. You know, like. I, I need resources. To, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't want you to fuck my shit. This is my shit. This is what I do. Just give me the room. Yeah. Give me the room. Um, Give me the slot on, on the, on the, excuse me, on the radio station and um, let's go with it, you right. know? But that's, that's just something that I thought about this week is like, I love what I'm doing. You know, I love what, what this podcast is growing into. Uh, I love what the crew's doing. Mikey over here, you know, doing a great job. Shout out Mikey. Matos and Nezo always, always shouting them out. Shout out Nezo. Actual. <laughs> yeah Nezo is is a beast he's working on a project himself nice yeah he's working on a project himself um and he's very unique he's very unique yeah the last time i talked to Nezo, he was not working on music so it's good to hear that he's working on music again <laughs> well here's the thing i'm not gonna say too much but um just like you uh he has two sides of music yeah you know what i mean like you have a hundred mile an hour speed and then you have <laughs> i might need to go cry yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know when it comes to Nezo, and he's He's an interesting mind, you know, and, and he was hype as fuck to have, like, be like, oh, you got Broey coming on? You know, he, he thought you were a great dude. So. I love Nezo. He's Nezo, like, actual shout out. You're my my boy. I love you. <laughs> um, so I asked earlier, what's your favorite genre of music since it's not lo-fi? What yeah. is your favorite genre of music? Um, right now, I'm really high on drum and bass music. Okay. Drum yeah. and bass music. Can you give me a few artists? Yeah. So some artists that inspire me, I, not that I'm, sh I'm sure you probably won't know them, um, but... One is sub focus. Okay. Uh, one is dimension. Mm. This other guy is metric, and there's also culture shock. Oh man, there's just like so many. I could read a little yeah, off yeah. like ten different names, but like these are like a lot of the uh, top guys in drum and bass music, right? They're like the popular dudes. Um, but are you familiar with drum and bass That's, music at all? That was what I was going to ask. Is drum and bass very similar to what you do where it's just sound? Or are we having lyrics, lyrics in there as well? Yeah, lyrics. Okay. And there's also uh, rap. So I think of drum and bass, I think of Joey Badass. Not really. Okay. So drum and bass uh, originated in like the 80s and 90s where people were literally taking like drum breaks from like James Brown songs and like old... Uh, like or R and B songs, speeding them up and then putting other like vinyl records over it. So it was a lot of like breaks mixed with like samples, um, and it's very similar to lo-fi in that regard, where you're still taking breaks and samples. It's just faster. Um, that was like the origination, drum. the uh, beginning of like jungle is what they would call it. So jungle is a lot of like breaks and samples. Well, dusty hold on. Stuff. All right, I saw the one. <laughs> I saw the one video on your Instagram where you're there and the caption was jungle yeah that, proper okay. okay yeah okay so that's similar to what drum and bass music is yeah so drum and jungle is like the father okay. and drum and bass 
all like there's there's so many sub genres of drum and bass, but jungle is how drum and bass originated. What an interesting name for a genre. Jungle. Yeah. 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 I'm not exactly sure why it was called jungle, um, but I, I mean, sure. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna ask questions, you know. <laughs> that's uh that's a pretty good type of speed tempo. I like that. Yeah. Did you speed it up or is it 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 was like that? Um, so the drum breaks were slow. They were okay. like, tun, 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 and then you just speed it up really fast and mm-hmm. then throw samples over it. Copy. Um, but Propo was interesting. I, I haven't put that out yet. If you haven't seen the video, you should go check it out. It's on my Instagram. Um, that jungle sound was a sound that I was familiar with as a kid. Like stuff like that used to be in like all the video games that I played. Like I remember hearing that stuff like way back and I didn't know what it was because I was just like a kid what do I know at that time (laughs) and then um once I got older and started getting more involved in music again uh and like hearing people make this stuff I was like oh it like sparked that thing that was in me way back when when I was like a little kid I was like I remember this and it started bringing up all those like nostalgic moments when I was like sitting in my basement playing like Gran Turismo on my Xbox (laughs) like stuff like that and I was like, that's what. That's when the script kind of flipped from low fi where I was like, now I want to make that stuff because mm. that's what I was feeling uh, at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting stuff. It's it's literally the same tempo as lo fi for the most part, but sped up. So I could take some of my lo fi songs and play it twice as fast. Yeah, and then throw breaks over it, and sometimes it works as like a jungle drum and bass flip. It's pretty cool. Do you work on multiple projects at once? Like, let's say you have a lo-fi beat that you're working on, but then you have something more upbeat, up-tempo uh, on the other end. Are you, m- like, meshing the two? Or do you kind of take it one by one? Yeah, I hyper-obsess. Hyper-obsess. Yeah, okay. so I will start something, yeah. and I won't stop until it's finished. <laughs> oh, okay. Or, I mean, I'll give up sometimes where I'm just like, this isn't it. Um, it's a good foundation uh, that's usually when I'll be like, maybe I could send it off to like this person that kind of has like their sound, uh, see if they can do something with it. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, like I will sit down and spend like 14 to 15 hours, like working on this track nonstop until it's done. And it's, it's, it's yeah. Um, but I would, I prefer it that way. Um, it helps me stay in the headspace. You know what I mean? A lot of coffee, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of caffeine. Um, but it's just crazy, like getting into those kind of headspaces where you're just working, like you keep your head down, like you don't eat, you don't drink, like you're in this flow state. Well, for me, Damn, at you least. go nuts, huh? Yeah, like I at full isolation, like Come no on, one bothered bro. me. Yeah, like <laughs> the light, man, it burns. Uh, but yeah, it's that's how a lot of my tracks like actually go from beginning to end. Like I will just like sit there and just bang it out until it's done. That's um, sick, but man. bouncing between projects, like. It, it's chaotic for me. My head is very chaotic. I'm not the most organized person. I try to be, uh, but sometimes when there's like a lot of stuff thrown at me, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't even, I don't know where to look first, and like it just gets messy. And no one produces like stresses me out, right? And like not obviously you don't work well under stress. So front to back in like one session is what works best for me. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a chaotic method, but you yeah. know if it's the way that you operate. It's the way you operate. Yeah. I can't question it. It works know? sometimes. <laughs> you come, you come out with some bangers, man. You come out with some bangers. Thanks. A lot of great music there, man. I really do enjoy your lo-fi. You know, I find it funny because more often than not, I play lo-fi before we do a podcast here. Yeah. And I was like, do I do it for him? Because it's like he's <laughs> listening to his own music. Like, yeah. It's kind of weird. Is it weird? Would that have been weird? <laughs> uh, I don't think it would have been weird. I would be interested to see what ones you chose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would be like, then that would be the talking point for me. I'd be like, so why'd you pick this one? <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? No, nah, I do like um, one of your top songs, which is Paradise. Yeah. Um, And I just, I just like that sound, bro. I just get lost in it. Like if you were to ask me um, what song, I'd be like, I can't tell you the song, bro. I just, I just fuck with the sound. You know, um, the very, the ones that are distinct are like warning, you know, that's, that's a very distinct te- separate sound. And I. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, like, yeah, bro, it's been, like, a few hours, man. We had a quick intermission in between. You know, I got tattooed, two tattoos within a few hours. <laughs> complete wardrobe drink, uh, change. Your beard grew out a little bit it more. Did, yeah. Um, You know, so... We just, went into the hyperbolic time chamber, if you're, if you're a big <laughs> anime watcher. No, I don't know what that is. Tell Damn, me what that it's is. It's a Dragon Ball Z reference. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, you're I'm good. <laughs> I dropped the ball. I, you know, now. sometimes in conversations, I just like to throw them out there and see if, like, anyone picks up on it. It's like a like a bonding thing, you know? 
I've watched some anime, but uh, Dragon Ball Z, like, there's so much with Dragon Ball. Yeah, there's so it was a lot like of them. a lot going on there. Yeah. But what's going on, everyone? So let me just give you the quick rundown. Uh, Broly's mic died <laughs> yeah. midway through, and we found that out post production. So shit happens, you know? Dude. Um, but, you know, it, we just, we're just going to make up for it. Um, thank you for being here once again. Thanks again for having me. And, and right before it cut off, uh, we were talking about your lo fi music. Um, and, you know, I remember mentioning how, like, the lo fi music, you know, if there are any, I can listen to all types of songs from Broly, right? I could, you asked me specifically, like, what song did you, like, listen to? Remember the title? I remember Paradise. But there's so many. I, I essentially just like the sound of lo fi, but then there's that warning track, you know, and that one's just, like, so different. Yeah. It's a different switch up, man. And that's, like, is that where you want to go with the music? Is that where you're trying to head to? Yeah, so I guess in terms of direction, like I'm not really thinking of that far mm-hmm. where I want to go. Um, like the, the most difficult thing like with lo-fi, I think we were talking about like everyone has the same kind of opinion. Like it all sounds the same, right? So when you're the artist or the creator who's making something that everyone else is also making, like how do you stand against the grain doing that type of stuff, right? So when I had the chance to work with Cody and Jared on Warning, I was like, I have to, I have to release this because this is like, this is going to be one of those tracks where people are going to listen to it and they're going to be like, oh, who is this? Like, I have to see who these guys are. Like, I've never, I maybe never heard something like this before. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to use that as an opportunity to kind of like turn the passive listeners into an active listener uh, in hopes that it would like turn into a fan or like a follower or whatever. Um, but like gen- general direction, dude, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't plan on like making one type of music. Like warning isn't going to be the pinnacle or like, lo- I won't stop making lo-fi beats. Like I'm just going to keep creating and whatever, like I'm inspired by in the moment I'm creating is technically like where I'm going to like focus on my creative energy. I got you, bro. So like, I really, uh, I really enjoy that warning track and it's like, it's just a different type of, uh, sound from you. And it's really, really cool. It just adds to your arsenal. You know, it shows you more as like a complete, uh, sound guy, as we mentioned before, you know, yeah. and, uh, we don't have our sound guy, excuse me. We don't have our camera guy here today. Our camera guy, uh, Mike is not here. He's at a rave actually. Nice. Um, did he say who he was going to see? No, but I did see some video, yeah. and uh, it looked fucking lit, man. So I'm happy you're having a ball. I'm also happy you're having a ball, man. Raves are a good time. Have you ever raved? No, I've never been to a rave. Oh, man. I've never been to a rave. But when Put I that think, on, the, on the bucket list. When I think about... All right, it has to be on a bucket list, uh, bucket list. When I think about rave and I think about the music, you know, I could see the warning being in there. I could see a lot of jungle music being in there, man. Like, yeah. You know, and... Uh, since the last time we spoke, it's been like a week, you know, yeah. um, I've, I've gone ahead and I listened to your recommendations as far as like, just j- listen to jungle music, bro. Check it out. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've developed a few questions for that. You sure. know, I've developed a, a little bit of a, I, I fuck with it, bro. I fuck with it. If you have never listened to jungle music, fucking listen to jungle music, yeah. but it's jungle music like D and B, correct? Yeah. So drum and bass was after jungle. So jungle was like the original sound okay. and then it kind of spread out into overall drum and bass so jungle is jungle like is that like the pace is that where it's so i know you and i were talking about the drum and bass part of it like the drum and bass like their samples from like back in the day you yeah. know and it's literally a drum and bass sound that maybe uh I don't know Travis Barker, right? He's a pretty good drummer. Yeah, but he's probably wouldn't be able to keep up with that type of temp. Maybe I he mean, could. He, if anyone, I he's, think he might be the right. guy. <laughs> let's let's think about an avid drummer, yeah. right? Like a, a normal a drummer. normal drummer, mm-hmm. like who sits in their garage. Yeah, like a garage drummer. So that's <clears throat> so that's like the drum and bass part of it. Is there taking the sounds from that? What's the jungle part of it? So I'm not actually sure why. Um, why they call it's it called jungle? Okay. Yeah, 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 I really have no idea. I'll. Definitely look it up, and I'll definitely give you what I find. But, yeah. But Jungle, yeah, Jungle was cool. It, it started with, like, DJs literally taking, like, drum samples, James Brown drum breaks that were, like, slower in pace, and then they would just play it faster, and then on one DJ deck, they'd play the break on loop, and then on the other uh, on the other deck, they would play, like, samples of something that was, like, the musical aspect, and, like, they would blend them into, like, this new track, which is crazy, because that was like really the beginning of like dance music that was sped up that fast like that yeah. wasn't a thing um it was it was like german house music like a lot of like i like house music yeah so it was a lot of that before jungle started like peeking its head out um but kind of like i was saying do you 
uh, before off camera with the lo-fi and the jungle stuff like at its core the production is similar like a lot of lo-fi stuff um, focuses like I guess original lo-fi not like the sleepy kind of lo-fi that people listen to now but yeah. it, it was mainly started with people like taking those drum breaks and turning them into hip-hop kind of drums with the same type of like samples um, you, a lot of the music that you listen to probably you'll hear samples from like old like soul songs and stuff like that yeah so like the foundation is similar um, and I think that's why I kind of liked blending between lo-fi and jungle because they I was already doing the sampling you know like what if I just sped it up a little bit <laughs> so it was just like a cool way to like see where my limitation was with that type of production I guess I like I like how you were saying that um, there's like there's two like tracks basically like let's think old school right if they had a DJ set and it yeah. wasn't electronic they would be spinning probably a vinyl with the drum break going on and then the left is where they introduce uh, the musical aspect like the lyrics part of it you yeah. know because um, I was watching a video last night on YouTube you yeah. know which was just a mix of jungle right. Mm -hmm. Was it like an old jungle mix or was it like a, a newer one? It was an older jungle the mix. The older ones are the best ones. Yeah, it was an yeah. older jungle mix. And uh, the person, their their visual was just like the switch up between the two final tracks. Yeah. You know, like it was just like, oh, it's this final track, this final track. This is what I'm sampling. This is where I'm getting it from. Yeah. So it's really, really cool to see that. And uh, as a matter of fact, the comments were hilarious, you know. <laughs> Um, and I did take a screenshot uh, of these uh, comments for, for Jungle Music here, and I want to just bring them up real quick. While Dude, YouTube is an interesting place. The comment section on YouTube can get dark, or they could be an absolute comedy show. This was a comedy show. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> it was a comedy show, and I think it, it was consistent through a lot of the Jungle Music. So um, it goes, I'm 50. My first time going to a rave, I was 25. It was my first time doing E, and I found myself in the Jungle Room. It was amazing. A feeling, a sound, an experience I had never felt. And I'm like, wow. I'm yeah. like, could you imagine that fucking experience yeah. the first time? <laughs> hey, Michael might be doing that shit right now, yeah. bro. Are you taking E and listening to Jungle Music? Bro? I hope, dude. That sounds exciting. Um, this guy <laughs> this guy goes, I'm a 1,200-year-old gnome, like lawn gnome, and, and I put this mix on when reviewing data on, off track, betting in the Himalayas. It helps me get through the the tendum. I don't know, whatever. I have it, no idea what that guy is like, talking about. Like, I think he took too much E. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, this is the last one. I was nowhere near being alive when this genre came out, but I'm loving it. Yeah. You know, like, and it seems like everyone is referring to, because it was just consistent with the age jokes. Yeah. You know, and it really does go far back, yeah. bro. Like, far back. Yeah. Um. Now that I think about it, I think like the beginning of Jungle, the sam like the musical samples, not the drum samples, were reggae samples. Okay. Uh, and because of like the location of like the where reggae was popular, I think that might be why they started calling it Jungle. I'm not entirely sure. That would be my assumption. No, it, it <clears throat> can make sense because listening through uh, the mixes, you know, I did I did feel like a heavy reggae presence yeah. in there. Um, yeah. And I like that shit. Bro. Same. That I like it like normal reggae, and then like hearing it in this type of like medium. It was definitely different for me. I think that's why I was like, "Ooh, this is exciting." <laughs> so, what's the tempo that um, they try to keep up with? What's the drum, drum and bass like tempo? What is that? Yeah, it's like um, I think drum and bass can fall anywhere between like, <clears throat> excuse me, 160 BPM and like 175 BPM. Uh, it's it's one of the fastest of the genres. Yeah, for sure. No, 110 percent because. Yeah as I was mentioning to you off camera is I like to try to tap when I'm listening to shit, you know, I'm, I'm an active tapper Yeah. or I'll even just poke at the sky, bro. I'll, yeah. I'll look fucking weird, bro. But it feels um, good, right? Yeah. But I don't care. Yeah. But you're living. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I got headphones on. I'm just like, you don't know what the fuck I'm doing right. here, bro. I'm compute. But they, he, <laughs> yo, Oh my gosh. All right. I wonder what, all, what other people think. Like, what is he computing? <laughs> like, <laughs> you can come up with some crazy stories about that too. Like no one will ever know. No one will ever no. know, bro. And then if I just start like doing this shit, yeah, you know, like start getting the computer screen. We're getting on the tangent here, but <laughs> um, when it comes to that type of beat, man, it's like damn near impossible to keep up with, man. It's unbelievable. Like, yeah. Have you have you been able to keep up when you're like doing your thing? Uh, I mean, to a very minimal extent, yeah. So like yeah. the kick and the snare. That's easy because it's very um, consistent. Mm -hmm. But like 
the hi hats and like all the percussive elements and stuff like there's a lot going on in drum and bass and like jungle stuff like you would have to be a very advanced drummer i feel like to be able to copy or to play back something that you hear in a drum and bass song Mm -hmm. i know that there are some drummers who do it i've seen them um and i know a lot of drummers who like record their own drum and bass breaks and sample packs and like sell them um so i know people can do it uh but like for me when i'm producing uh if anything I, I normally just like drag the samples in for drum and bass. Like I'll put them on the grid um, just because like, like I said, the kick and the snare, they're, they're on the same beat every single time. So they don't really have to change too much. And a lot of the variation in the drums comes from layering drum breaks over that. So it's just like a process of layering and like finding which layers work and which ones don't work. And it's always surprising. It's always comes out with something new. I would like to see an advanced drummer um, just like, basically repeat that that sound yeah you know like i would like if travis barker is doing that bro I'm, i want to see a video of him I'll, i know that. some people I'll, I'll show you off off camera that be guys that are doing this yeah let's uh let's uh dive into it because yeah. that, that would be very dope um, yeah <laughs> but you know nonetheless uh yesterday i was um so what happened is with sound okay like we didn't have the headphones on we didn't want to do playback something happened right so I'm trying to figure things out nezo being the guy he is he's helping me uh figure out fl studio here um, and we're over here, we're, we're basically making a, a preset for the podcast, right? And as we're on the phone, we're talking to each other. He's like, wait, hold up. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, there's no fucking way this is happening right now. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, bro, he's in the same stream as I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was like last night. Um, and yeah, he, I was, I was like, are you sure? He's like, bro, who else calls himself bro Brody beats? beats? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I t- I did a double take too because I'm I'm in streams like regularly like music streams, mm-hmm. um and like you can reply to people's comments in the streams right, so a lot of times when people like reply to my comments in the stream like I don't look at who they are because it's it's like a massive sea of people who are in the chat at any given moments so, like <laughs> yeah when I I looked at the name and he was like bro yeah and I looked again I was like wait Nezo <laughs> and I was he's like dude I didn't know that you watched this stream I was like. Uh yeah, like this is my homie. <laughs> Who was the streamer? Uh, his name is Bishu. Okay. Yeah, he's a producer from Nova Scotia in Canada. Nova Scotia, in yeah. Canada. Okay. Canada beat makers are a little different, dude. I'm not gonna lie. In what aspect? You would just have to listen to their music to understand. Okay. It's more so like a cultural thing. I feel like like hmm. their influences and like the way that they go about life is just different than he, a little. Well, it's similar, but it's different, and I think it's the differences that inspired those different creative choices it's very interesting no i i agree you know like um that's that's dope bro yeah i would like to listen to that and i thought that that was hilarious that yeah the two of you were in that chat you <laughs> yeah. know um, what other streamers do you often tap into and listen to um maybe educational ones for people who are just trying to learn in this field yeah so i guess i should start by saying stream music streaming uh in particular like if someone is making music uh, the engagement's pretty low. Like okay. people don't like to sit there and watch people make music because the majority of people who are making music are there uh, to make music. They want to make music, right? So the streamers that I watch are Tails, uh, Bishu, and this guy Eliminate, uh, and they all are pretty engaging music streamers. Like they have um, like certain days where they do feedback on the stream. So like you could send their track into them. They'll play it for everyone who's watching the stream. They'll give you feedback. Um, what do you mean? Like, if I had a track, I would be able to send it to them and they would play it? Yeah. That's If sick. you were working on a track and you wanted, like, feed, just any type of feedback, like, I'm stuck on this track, what do you think I could do? Or, I finished this track, like, just give me your overall thoughts on it. That's like, nice. they'll play it in front of everyone on the stream, he'll give you his thoughts on it, and then, you know, you keep it moving. Um, but then he, they also do, like, engage in, engaging streams where, like, my friend Tails does EDM bingo. So, like, he'll put up <laughs> he'll put up a bingo card... And he's like, you have to use these elements in a, like a minute long beat, right? So he'll give you like an hour or like 45 minutes to make the minute of music using, like you got to get bingo on the card. He'll do it while everyone else is doing it. And then they'll play through all of the songs like on the stream. So stuff like, like little stuff like that. Um, That's fun. Yeah. It, and it's awesome because you really get to see the creativity that you're capable of doing under limitations, right? Because I think, I don't know if I was here... I said it the last time I was here. I said the only limit is you as a creative. Like you are your limitation. So when there are extra limitations, like you only like he does beat battles on Friday nights, tales, 
So he'll give you like eight samples. You got to use all eight samples to make a minute long mm. beat. So when you have only eight samples to make a beat, it's like, okay, well, your limitations are the samples, but you are the limit in how you use those samples. So it's just like pushing yourself over that edge to see what you're really capable of, given what you're given. Um, and I feel like as a music producer or as a creative, just like taking part in that stuff in a community of people who are also doing the same thing uh, really helps you. Uh, you know further yourself as a human yeah no i agree with you 100 percent, man i wonder if there's any avenues like that for podcasting because that's uh that's really really cool to be only able to work with those eight samples within a minute create it and, and have a a contest for it you know i think about um like i'm a big lego guy i love the legos you yeah know, there is a lego show where they do do that but there's a rule you know there's a limitation yeah which is you have to build <laughs> off of this block you know you can't you get you could do whatever you want, but that block has to be in the center. Like I saw one where they had um just a long, just one single long piece of block. That's yeah. it, right? And it was suspended from the ceiling, and they had to build off of that. And bro, so could you go down and up from that? You could go anywhere you wanted. Crazy, yeah, anywhere you <laughs> wanted, dude. Um, these people created like uh, a sperm whale getting attacked by a giant squid off of that, and it's suspended from the fucking air. Yeah, and it probably weighs a shit ton, and it. They lost, and yeah. I was mad that they lost because I was like, "Yo, like they were definitely the winner." The the turtle, the turtle island won. It was yeah. like a turtle, and then it had like uh, the world on its back. That's pretty cool. like a shell. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty dope. But I was like, "Nah, the whale won that." Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. I don't know if there's any for podcasting, but you definitely should look. Um, and I don't know if I talked about this the last time, but I was like, talk. I think I wanted to talk about like being in the community, right? Mm-hmm. So like just having that community of people who are doing the same thing as you who might be doing something, you know, that you've been struggling with or something that you didn't think of yourself. Now you see that people are doing it, how they're doing it. And then from there, you can kind of refine it for yourself. Like, how can I make this work in my way? And that's why I want to go on to other shows. Right. Um, and I'm not opposed to that. It's just been a little bit difficult to get on other shows. It's, it's been a uh... It's been a little weird. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about that off Timing. camera. I've, I've, I've talked about it on camera, um, but I'll talk about it off camera. Uh, but with that being said, man, we made up for the time of where your microphone dropped out and Easy. died. Um, <laughs> so, you know, before we get off the air here, I'd like to give the, the floor to my guests here. You know, um, any inspirational messages, anything that you want to drop uh, for the people, please feel free. This is the time. The floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah. So once again, uh, I'm Broy Beats. You can find me on all my socials at Broy Beats. Uh, I am a music producer. I'm an audio engineer. I am an audio teacher. I'm just a real sound guy. So if you have any music needs, any questions on music or producing or engineering, I'm your guy. Uh, I offer one-to-ones where I basically will give you the hour on Zoom and we can talk about mixing. Uh, I could sit in the project with you while you're doing the project and I can just, you know, give you pointers or whatever, uh, really whatever you want to do. Um, and I think what I said before, the most important thing as a creative is that the only limitation is yourself. So get out there and get it done. Go out there and get it done. Yes, sir. There's one thing that you did forget, though. He's also a bro. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hence the name bro So with that being said, thank you for being here. Once again, uh, everyone, please stick around for Tea Time. Not brought to you by, but inspired by Arizona Ice Tea. I am the man in the middle, Kevin Martinez, signing out. Peace.